it's a couple days later and we've had a slight change of plans uh, the other air compressor uh, that I was working on that I had put on this spinning thing that makes it turn to clean it out we got it cleaned out and this is not it uh, this one is a 30 gallon which the other one was a 20 gallon uh, so I mean I didn't clean it for no good reason uh, I cleaned it out and inspected it and everything and it's it's ready to go I just need to get it sanded and painted where I left off on the last section of this video and um, We're going to sand this, but right now I'm just dry fitting everything. I've done got the pump rebuilt, and it looks pretty good. Um, we had to do a bunch of changing around because it had a whole bunch of this stuff, uh, this valve, or this pressure switch, which is not a bad switch. Uh, it just does 175, and I don't want that much pressure on it. Uh, I want to do 150. I want to kind of balance it out. Simply because the other tank I'm going to use for a holding tank. So, um, what I plan to do for the Bison Workshop is uh, build this one. This will be the main air compressor since it's a 30 gallon. And I'm going to take the other tank that you guys see me put on the spinning thing to clean out and I'm going to put it on the other end of the shop and we're going to use the existing uh, uh, steel pipe plumbing that's on this tamper that came with it for the hot water heater which is at that end the furnace which is right here and uh, the hookup for where it hooks up to the tanks so we've got three different hookups and I'm going to sell the air compressor, I mean the um, furnace. I never use it. I've been here for two years and I ain't used it yet. So uh, maybe that'll give me my money back in what I've done here. So that's the plan so far. Now, like I said, I'm just dry fitting everything, getting it to where everything's formed the way I want it, the way I want my gauges pressure switch, the motor, um, had to make some plates or steel plates out of this flat bar which is quarter inch thick and I found two straight pieces that was off of this end and made some plates that goes underneath there for, and threaded them so that I wouldn't have to worry about a nut on every one of these. So I can just put one in it and that will help squeeze it together so that um, it will be a little more even. Simply because this is not the motor for this stand. So we got a, we've upgraded. We was going to use uh, a half horsepower. This one here came with this tank. And this compressor came with this tank. And... Um, I'm going to paint this one up the same as I did the other one, which is laying over there in the corner. And um, so we've upped from a half horsepower motor to a one and a half horsepower. And it's 220 or 110 also, so if I weren't, ever want to change it, I can. Um, we're going to have it to where it will hold 150 PSI, which I've already got set. I've done had this thing running once, but I had it running with the other pump. This pump wouldn't get past 40 pounds. So I took the head off of it and what looked to me like walnuts. How the hell walnuts got in there because here is how it looked when I got it. It had this on there. Well, if I can hit the hole. 
it had that on it minus the foam uh, I put the foam on it it had one of them filters like you'd see on the top of a valve cover on a car on an old hot rod or something but it's noisy so we're going to take this one off and put my homemade one on it it looks like a mic <laughs> and it works pretty good too now, I probably won't use that because uh, I'm going to eventually get a, the right filter for it. I may even make one. I'm, I'm kicking it around about making me an aluminum one. And, uh, let's see, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Now, basically, this is just an update, uh, part two of the bison workshop air compressor uh, this one's for the bison workshop so this one's got to be perfect perfect per more than perfect now for somebody else it has to be perfect but for me it's got to be more perfect <laughs> oh lord anyways um it's going slow because it seems like every fitting that I need to make this work the way I want. Um, I'll show you something here. Now, this here was right up here in this hole. Right here. And the problem was I couldn't find a long enough piece of pipe, half inch, to go from here to here. I was like... From here to here of making it and I don't have any half-inch copper pipe so I had to uh, resort to lowering this and I don't think that's such a big deal because basically all this is is a water chamber this thing let me get y'all out of the light here this here just collects water and then you drain it off right here on this that or this valve so, um, this here is hollow all the way through it. So, it doesn't matter if you use this hole or this hole. Uh, you just have to keep an eye on this and make sure that it, it's emptied at all times, which I'll probably put some kind of hose on. I may even change that to a different fitting so I can put a hose on it. So, I can bring it down. I don't want whatever's in here to hit my tank after I get done. So, uh, this is what we've got. You guys can pause the video. Give you all kinds of angles so you can pause in a different spot. That gauge is just temporary. Uh, this shear line is just temporary. Uh, once I get it right, then I'll bend this to put it wherever I want. And I had to do that because I didn't have any copper line. Well, I just accumulated some. And I think this is the right size. Yep, that's the same size. So I may have enough to go from there all the way to here. And I went quick, didn't I? See how it goes up around there like that? Well, that's not going to be like that. We're going to make it look neat. And then we're going to paint it black. Guess you guys already knew that though. That's the bison color, black. And right on the front of it, I'm seriously thinking about putting in big gold letters, bison air. Then I come down here and I put this on here. Now once I'm done, I got to get an elbow. I don't like that T. That's why I got it blocked up here on this end because that's too tall or too low so I need to get an elbow to come out and I may even use this T because that will bring it up about a half inch and then I can take these feet back out and then all this will be painted and the brass will be shined up and make it, made it look pretty and um, that way, I can take and put a hose on this and run it down into a container or even out 
underneath in the floor. Um, I got to run a line from uh, the propane tanks up to this right here and this will feed the line and then I'll hook up here where the um, I'll hook up where the furnace is right here and then I'll run me an airline here somewhere and then I'll have one back here at the mill. So that's our plan. Sorry about the confusion, but you know, things happen. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for something better. And a lot of times, well, biggest part of the time, I'll be working on something to make for the bison workshop and then something happened to come along that I was looking for anyway. So that's why things change around here. Uh, my mind changes constantly because as I'm going along, things are, are uh, coming along. So it's a slow process. But in the end, when it's said and done, I'm hoping I'll amaze you, and I'm pretty certain I can do that. So, I'll give you a last look at the uh, pump. This one here was the pump that I was going to use to pump a motor. So, basically, what I'm going to do is I clean that one up and clean that motor up, and we're going to use that and that belt. And we're going to build another air compressor using this one. I was going to do a silent air compressor, but I don't have the stuff to do it with. So, plus I think that motor or it pumped a little bad. So we're going to put that on there, and we're going to turn that into another air compressor and sell it. And then we've got this one that I am currently using. And it'll be sold. And it's a good air compressor. It's got a two horsepower motor on it. So here is the new and improved pump. Now let's just hope that it's fixed. I cleaned a bunch of walnuts out of it and rust and stuff like that in the area of the reed valves which I still have yet to figure out how it got walnuts in there unless somebody had this off at one time and left it for a while. And either wind blowed something in it or I don't, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. But walnuts was underneath this one right here. Alright, check this dipstick out, man. This is, you can't get no uh, finer than that. Brass, steel pin, very clean oil. I thought that was pretty cool to have a dipstick that was original to this, the brass. And it just slides down in there and that's all it does. You got a taper on the bottom of it. Anyway, this is getting a little long. I'll go ahead and um, tell you what I got to do now. Now I got to take and wire wheel all this. Wire wheel or gas. Clean this up with gas. With steel wool and gas. All right. Then once we've got it cleaned to this surface right here, this is what it looked like after I cleaned it with the gas. And uh, it's got these little specks in it. It's either overspray or mud or something. And we'll get the whole thing looking like this instead of that. If you guys get a good picture of it. Oh, uh, I don't know what you all are seeing. I, I can see something here, but it don't look like it does when I'm looking at it. It looks worse when I'm looking at it. And then we're going to sand it and uh, redo it, repaint it. Anyway, 
I'm Bob. You guys have a good one. Please subscribe, like, love to hear your comments. Don't get enough of those. I sat in there and wait for them, but I don't get them. So comment, subscribe, give me that big thumbs up. You guys have a good one. Later.